Right, today we are going to talk about R wave, R wave progression abnormalities. Right? In the previous lecture, I discussed in detail that what is the normal R wave progression in precordial leads or chest lead. Right? Before really I go into detail of abnormalities of R wave progression, I would love to briefly review normal R wave progression. Now what is normal R wave progression? Normal R wave progression is that when you look at the ECG pattern, right? QRS pattern from V1. Let me show you like, yes. In V1, normal V1 lead, there's a small R wave and there's a deep S wave. And as you move from V1 onward, for example, here is V2, right? Here is V3 in a normal person. Here is V, yes, 4. And here is V5. And here is again V6. Now, if you look at the pattern of QRS complex from V1, up to the V5, right? I will write it here. It is V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. Now, if you look at the QRS complex from V1, right, to where up to V5, you see that dominantly QRS complexes are negative in right-sided chest leads and QRS complex are dominantly positive deflections on left-sided chest leads. And in between, they are showing biphasic deflections. Is that right? But if you focus only on R waves, R wave deflections, you will note as you move from V1 up to the V5, what is happening that R waves are becoming progressively progressively tall, right? Again, I will repeat, as you move from V1 up to the V4 or V5, you see the height of the R wave is progressively increasing, right? Why, what, this phenomenon where R wave from V1, from V1 up to V4 or V5, progressively increasing in its height, this phenomenon is called R wave progression in chest leads or precordial leads. Now, this R wave progression, why this occurs, I will explain right now. But I want to mention one thing, that in V6, usually R wave is less tall than V5. The reason being that electrode for V6, where it is applied in the mid axillary line between the heart and the electrode, there's a lot of lung tissue which attenuates the depolarizing currents. That is why this becomes relatively less tall as compared to V5. Now, let me explain exactly how it happens. This is your heart, left ventricle, and here is right ventricle. Of course, left ventricle is thick, right ventricle is thin. And here we apply V1, yes, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. V6. Is that right? Now, major uh, ventricular depolarization, as we know that when ventricles undergo depolarize, the first part of the ventricle which undergo depolarization, that is the septum. And septum is depolarized from left to right and this produces septal current with a small, small vector, right, which is directed from left to right as depolarizing currents within the septal muscle, they're moving from left to right. This is the first. After that, once the septal depolarization is completed, as you know, okay, I will mention this is AV node, bundle of hairs, bundle branches, right? Now these are Purkinje system. Now what really happens that 
after the septal depolarization current reaches major ventricular tissue and right ventricle and left ventricle both start undergoing depolarization almost simultaneously they start undergoing depolarization almost simultaneously right and that depolarization is from deeper part of myocardium directed to the outer part of the myocardium it means that if I show you the vector this is the depolarizing currents of in the right ventricle and here are the depolarizing current of the left these are small vectors these are left ventricle now you see that current is moving from inside to outside from endocardial area to the sub -endo uh, epicardial myocardium is that right now all these currents because they are almost simultaneously they can be added together and we can make this vector and this vector is right ventricular depolarization vector all these vectors added together and here uh, this is showing left ventricular depolarization when we are adding the current of all left ventricular vectors when they are added together this is this vector is representing left ventricular, ventricular depolarization and if added together on the right side this vector is representative of right, right ventricular depolarization but again right ventricular depolarization and left ventricular depolarization they are occurring simultaneously so they can be added together in real phenomenon there are right ventricular QRS forces and then left ventricular QRS forces but both of them are almost simultaneous in time so they can be added together when they will be added together right this is directed away from the left so resultant vector will be smaller than left one let me tell you when you add both of them the resultant vector is this one this was the only left ventricular depolarization it is the only right ventricular depolarization but when they are added together then final this vector what is this vector resultant vector of major ventricular depolarization this resultant vector this resultant vector is smaller than the only left ventricular vector why because right ventricular vector partially cancels the left ventricular as it is directed leftward and backward this is directed rightward and slightly anteriorly but because it is small it is completely masked and it is partially masked partially neutralized so the resultant vector which represent both ventricular depolarization both ventricular major depolarization is directed leftward and slightly backward is that right yes, yes. now this is the resultant vector which is or resultant electrical forces which are sensed by these electrodes v1 to v6 now here you see why v1 is mainly negative because major ventricular depolarization is moving okay i will make it later like this now this is the resultant these are component vector major ventricular depolarization component vector major and right ventricular depolarization component vector and this is left ventricular and this is the resultant vector now resultant vector is which is actually uh, sensed by these electrode now for v1 and v2 they are right sided look at v1 v1 is right sided so vector is moving away so major ventricular depolarization is negative of course septal vector was coming towards it that produces a little r wave here is that right septal vector is coming r wave but major ventricular depolarization is going away deep s wave right but if you go to the left sided lead let's suppose v5 or v6 this vector is mainly moving towards v5 and v6 electrode so they are perceiving that depolarization is approaching 
the electrode. And when depolarization is going towards an electrode, deflection is positive. So main, this major vector produces positive deflections in V5 and V6. Is that right? But when you look at QRS patterns, QRS patterns from V1 to V5, you see that you are moving your electrode position from tail end, this is the tail end of this vector progressively leftward and electrode are eventually be placed on the head end of the vector. You are understanding? In a way, V1 is the most tail ended electrode and V5, V6 is the head ended or you can say V1, V2 are right sided and V5 and V6 are left sided and as it is moving from right to left, so it is receding away. It's moving away from V1 and V2, moving towards V5 and V6. So major complexes are negative in V1 and V2 and QRS complexes are mainly positive in V5 and V6. But V3 and V4 positions are so that vector is, perpendic uh, vector is moving perpendicular to the lead position. So they show biphasic. They show biphasic deflection. Now, if you look at only R waves in QRS pattern, you will see V1 has a small R wave, V2 has a little more, more taller R wave, V3 has more tall, remember where uh, R wave and what is this? S wave, they become equal, we say this is transition zone, right? In this diagram, transition zone is V3, right? Normal transition zone where uh, R wave and S wave are almost equal, right? Th usually it happen in, two, in V3 lead or V4 lead. If transition occur at V2, we say it's early transition. If transition occur at V5, we say it's late transition. Is that right? But here I'm showing the normal V3 transition. Now, you notice that R waves, as you move from V1 to V5, they are progressively becoming taller. So we say that there's a progression of R wave, right? There's progressively increasing height of R wave as you observe QRS complex from V1 to V5. V6 become little, what? Less tall, why? Because here is a lot of lung tissue between the lung, a uh, depolarizing current and the electrode. So that is why uh, current is attenuated and it becomes less tall, is that right? So this is normal R wave progression. Now, in certain conditions, this phenomenon of progressively increasing height of the R wave from V1 to V6 may be altered in some way. And if this progression is altered in some way, we say there is abnormality of R wave progression. It means when you hold that 12 lead ECG paper, you should look specifically only on the R waves from V1 to V5. Normally what should happen? In normal healthy person, this should progressively increase. Any question up to this? Now, we come to one phenomenon. First of all, I will tell you one abnormality of R wave progression, where R wave progression is accentuated. It's more than normal. I will explain how it happens.